Coach, can you um, just talk about uh, the fan base this year and how they came out to support the team and what Heat Nation really gave the players? They were there every night because I was sitting right there with them, <laughs> you know, every night. And and I, I do believe they, uh, over the last four years, you know, were delivered um, with a, a product that had tremendous excitement, uh, anticipation, uh, always taking it right to the end, to the finals. Uh, and I think that's in their blood now. Uh, they were very, very supportive, very loud, very noisy, coming, you know, every night. And, you know, this is, you know, like some of the other teams in the league, it's it's sort of a, you know, sometimes a late arriving crowd. And like every single team in the league, it's an early leaving crowd if you're down 10 with four minutes to go. So, I mean, I don't want anybody to ever say, yeah, they get up and leave, you know. But our fan base is great. They're really great. And uh, I think the... Uh, the renewal on season tickets, which is not my department, is you know way way up there, and everybody wants to come back for another look. And and so, you know, even though you know the concept of Heat Life or that we moved out on, onto even our you know in, into our you know our, our season ticket holders, there isn't a place that I go really that somebody doesn't come up and say, hey, I'm a season ticket holder. I mean, I could be in Missoula, Montana. I don't know why I'd be there. But I know somebody would go, I'm a season ticket holder. And then I would challenge him where he sits. You know, where do you sit? Okay, do you sit behind me? Do you sit behind the bench? Do you sit in the corner? Give me your section. Give me your number. And then you find out the truth. <laughs> but uh, they're a great base of, of fans. And we're proud to have them. Believe me, some of those nights that we had at home this year, you know, I coach in a couple of cities where I know what would have happened, and I'm not being negative about that, but there's there was a lot of patience this year with this team, and and I think the fans understood exactly what we were going through. Pat, you gave up an awful lot for Gorin on speculation, I guess, of an impending free agent, potential two lottery picks, depending how they fall. Do you have either a sense? Do you have... Did you have an agreement or something, a man's agreement, gentleman's agreement when Gorn came in? And and is there any chance in your mind, uh, a year ago you were talking about LeBron stay, continue the fight, that Gorn wouldn't stay and continue the fight? If he doesn't sign, my ass is going to be in that seat next year. And I'll be writing about it. I'll be, I'll be probably writing about it. <laughs> you know, so, uh, we feel very confident that, uh, that you know, we can, uh, you know, all of our free agents, that, that we have a great, you know, organization is a great city. Uh, there has not been any indication, any discussion at all with, with he or his representatives about anything other than when I, when I made the trade and gave up two picks for him. You roll the dice, but you also feel good about, you know, the fact that, you know, we're in a very good position to offer him more than anybody else. And then just because there, there were a bunch of moves that were made before LeBron's final decision. Do you feel this summer you will have more time to sort of work with a knowing going in of your game plan of what you're going to have? And might this make that a little bit different summer that you can look at specific needs knowing pretty much what your, your roster board is going to look like? Yes. Yeah. No more smiling faces with hidden agendas. Okay, so we'll be going in clean. Coach, you, you talked about the Golden State backcourt uh, a little while ago. What, what about Dwayne and Gorin with, with a training camp and, and what they had this year? What do, what do you see ahead for, for, for how that backcourt's going to look next year? Uh, I, I see... Um, you know, Spo is very correct about what he said the other day is that we're, we're a player development organization. And one of the reasons why we became an affiliate with Sioux Falls, you know, was for that possibility. Uh, you know, this year, three or four or five of those players, you know, kept making that sojourn back from, you know, Sioux Falls to Miami. And they helped us at times. Uh, I don't want that to be you know, that to be the norm. Because if that's the norm, then you're not going anywhere. 
somewhere one of those players will break through, you know, like Hassan. And, but he will probably have been um, a developed player who simply uh, wasn't ready. And what we're looking for here on this team is a, a developed player, you know, you know, one through ten, you know, who you develop. And just because a guy is young doesn't mean, you know, this is a player development organization. I mean, we develop all of our players, even our veterans work, you know, on improving their game. And I think Dwayne talked a lot about that with his post game. So uh, if, in fact, uh, you know, all of the tea leaves, you know, I don't know, do you say is a fall in the right place or something like that? Whatever. Uh, and, and we have a backcourt that, that we're thinking about that I'll, I'll feel very good about it, you know, from that standpoint. And, and, and the opportunity for some of those younger guys that, that got some significant player playing time, you know, you know Shabazz and Tyler, you know, from that standpoint, uh, and others, you know, who will be out there in, in that whole player pool, whether it's in the college draft or players who don't get drafted or European players or free agents. Uh, there's always, in my mind, I, I just know there's a diamond in the rough out there too. But we want developed players, experienced players. And, and again, uh, every time you guys turn on the television and watch a playoff game, take a look who's out on the court, the top eight or nine guys, with the exception of maybe one or two. But the very, very best teams in this league are playing developed players that have had three or four years or five or ten years of experience, you know, playing for something that's significant. All right, Pat, you uh, threw out a comment that I just got to ask for a follow-up on uh, no more smiling faces with hidden agendas. Um, oh, this, that could be for anybody across the board. I, and that's that's <laughs> what I'm like, doing my follow-up I mean, here. I get, I get, you know, agents and I get uh, – uh, you know, players, I get, you know, parents, uh, I get everybody that, that come across. You know, I mean, I've already got about a half a dozen emails from people I don't even know recommending. And somewhere, you know, in that email or that text is always a smiley. They put it down there. <laughs> you know, so we all, we all get that stuff, you know. <laughs> you have said once or twice, you've drawn the parallel between winning and misery and how there's really only two options. At, at this point, with nine rings and all you've done and all you've gone through, especially in the last five years, how does the misery still inspire? You know, I, I made that statement a long time ago when, when it was really, you know, deep. I mean, I mean, used to feel it deep like a knife anytime you lost. You know, I just, that's the way it was when I was younger and, you know, trying to make it and all that stuff. So every loss I took very personal and, and, and that's the way it was. It just was. And now, now that it's sort of like, you know, part of the vocabulary, you know, of at least, you know, my, my being, it's, uh, You know, it still it still stings. You know, it, it it stings from that standpoint. So it always drives you from that standpoint. Failure will always always drive you. And and but I'm also one of those guys that that and I think Eric is, and I think the owner is, and our players are. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear any excuses about anything. And and I always felt that one of the greatest achievements on the part of anybody is through great adversity to win a championship. And uh, or to win big or do something above and beyond. And so trying to play above and beyond and be and be above and beyond is is a goal of ours and mine. So the winning and misery thing is just the misery is a little bit more sh short lived. You know, with a good cabernet and stuff after a game it like goes a little faster.